This is Echo 3, and let's discuss going to Gilly. I'm going to make a small craft here. Root part is this docking port junior. Then I'm going to throw on some xenon gas. The xenon gas is going to be our fuel source for this mission, so we're going to use the Dawn engine. It's the only base game engine that uses this fuel type. Throw on a couple structural panels that we can attach some other things to here, like our command seats. I'm going to have a small craft capable of having two Kerbals go from low Kerbin orbit to EVE and land on Gilly and then return back to Kerbin orbit. We'll need lots of solar panels to power the Dawn engine, especially as we're doing maneuvers. Throw on a few batteries, make sure we have uh, enough electricity for this thing. You can see my Kerbal engineer numbers up there and you'll see that I have plenty of thrust to weight ratio and a gob of delta V. That's the nice thing with this craft as far as the ion engine is concerned. The ISP is so high that I don't need a lot of fuel to get a very high amount of delta V. So this here, this small craft with reaction wheels and solar panels, this is what's going to explore Gilly for us. I'm even using the fuel tanks as my landing gear. There's just so little gravity there. Now this craft itself will not be capable of surviving Kerbin re-entry. So we're going to create a separate craft that this craft will dock to and that will be our just our re-entry module. So we'll get into low Kerbin orbit and just drop off this section of the craft and when we get back into Kerbin orbit we will dock to it and this will help us then land safely back on Kerbin. So it's got a probe core, uh, we'll need to add a few batteries, probably some solar panels that will be able to keep itself running while we are gone, and obviously we'll need to add some parachutes because we'll need to land safely and those ion engines will not slow us down on Kerbin, but they'll be great on Gilly. Matter of fact, this little craft can probably explore the entire moon if we want it to. We'll encase this all in a fairing, and then I was trying to decide exactly what kind of rocket I want. I could probably push this entire craft up with one stage, and that would be more than sufficient to get this into orbit. But I decided I'm going to go with a two-stage design, but this upper stage is going to have way more delta V than I need. It only needs to get into low Kerbin orbit. Maybe I should have decided to push it to a higher orbit, but my goal was to get this into low Kerbin orbit. The skipper engine has plenty of thrust for this little craft, so I'm using it. It seemed to be about the right engine for the size. Throw on a few fins just to make sure it's stable, and this craft is ready to go. Let's launch it into low Kerbin orbit. Launch here goes pretty unsuccessfully, although on my first attempt, I was a little too aggressive and destroyed the heat shield. You can even see now that it is really heating up. The thrust to weight ratio on this craft is pretty high just because of how small it is, but that does let me fairly efficiently get into orbit as far as using the least amount of delta V possible. Use this second stage here and the upper stage just is to circularize our orbit. Don't worry, I'll keep it attached and use the fuel on it to deorbit everything so we won't leave any debris in space. Some people, that's a, that's a big thing. Now I used the in-game maneuver tool to create this and it created a maneuver out to EVE and so I'm just following it. No mods or anything used to make this, no mech jab or anything, no Kerbal alarm clock to set up my transfer. This is just the in-game tool and I am burning out to EVE right now with my ion drive. And I'm gonna get, I wanna get as close as I can to EVE and ultimately I do need to get to Gilly, so I'll need to think about how my inclination differs there. So I'm going to set up a maneuver here as I just enter Eve and see if I can correct my inclination a little bit. I want my ascending and descending nodes to line up with my apoapsis and periapsis. That way at my apoapsis, when I'm the furthest away from Gilly, I can the most cheaply correct my inclination to Gilly. It'll hardly take any amount of delta V at all to change my inclination. 
Now, I'm gonna run out of electricity here before I almost complete my orbit. So I'm gonna have to wait till I'm back into the sunlight. Now, that wasn't the most efficient way, but it was really the only way I could do it due to my lack of electricity and this craft needing electricity to run the engines. Now here I'm going to correct the inclination. And you can see this is a very cheap burn to do it this way. And then I want to raise my periapsis just a little bit so I can stay in the sunlight better. And then from this point we are going to work on trying to find an encounter with Gilly. And the sphere of influence is tiny on, on Gilly. So it's you almost think of it like rendezvous and docking. So I'm watching my closest approach markers and I'm trying to come up with something that'll work. I'm gonna change my orbit here just a little bit so it's a little bit more similar to Gillies. And there, I have found an encounter. So we're gonna carefully time warp to see to get this encounter. And actually, I quick saved and loaded and found that we will actually get an encounter before the one it's displaying. Um, it, it's just a little tricky with the way uh, the game seems to handle some of these maneuvers. So I'm jumping several orbits ahead here. And there, I can see I get an encounter right there, which is all I need. But with the sphere of influence being so small, the speeds involved around Gilly are very tiny. It, you, know, you only need like 40 meters per second to be in orbit around Gilly. So, fun little place to be, but what you need to do here is deorbit. And this is going to take us uh, several hundred meters per second to get into orbit around Gilly, but then it won't take us hardly anything to land. So, I'll have to pull this slider back quite a bit, see what exactly it's going to take. That will suffice for us. And I just need to get into orbit. I don't need to worry about any more details at this point in the craft. We've got the Delta V to spare, so let's go ahead and get into orbit here. We're not doing it too efficiently, and let's get our brave Kerbal Knots who've been cramped up in their little command seats out on the wide open world of Gilly. Just time warp here to our maneuver, and we're going to have to start burning fairly quickly once we get into the sphere of influence. But Gilly is a, a fun little move. Like anything you make can work on, on Gilly. The thrust to weight ratio to get anything high enough is pretty easy. The more difficult thing with Gilly is actually staying on the surface because the gravity is so low. I mean, your Kerbal can jump and leave the uh, reach escape velocity of, of the move. Matter of fact, there was a challenge quite a few years ago where can you get your Kerbal from the surface of Gilly back to Kerbin? And if you do everything right, it is possible. You have about 600 meters per second of Delta V in the Kerbal's jetpack, and with a good jump, and assuming you are jumping the right direction and making your Kerbal maneuvers at just the right time, you can get your stranded Kerbal back to Kerbin. Now, as far as the entry heating, you're not going to be able to survive that unless you change your difficulty settings, but it is possible to do that. that that's how low gravity Gilly even has. You know, we have circularized our orbit. That will work fine. We'll just need to deorbit at some point. Because this is uh, an ion powered craft, we're going to need to keep on the daylight side if we want our craft to function well. So I'm just going to make a deorbit here that will intersect the surface, and that'll work. And you can see the velocities are really low. And if you want to practice rendezvous and docking, if you were to cheat some craft in orbit around Gilly, it would be a great place just because things are moving so much more slowly than they are around other places. It's, it, it, time warp is my friend here as I'm trying to wait to get close to the surface. We're barely falling, which 
is sometimes my issue when I'm going to ghillie is I get impatient and I time warp too much and then I'm not paying attention and my craft crashes into the surface and crashes almost the wrong word so I'm watching what I'm doing here uh, I'd like to land kind of on this ridge it looks like a pretty cool place and I'm almost um, flying this like like an airplane or something it feels like just with the way my craft looks but we're just we're just going so slowly around Gilly but we can use this craft and it can maneuver and we'll have plenty of Delta V to explore anything we want on on the moon I am currently using parallax which is why my surface looks a little nicer than it normally does in the stock game and that helps here comes our terrain scatter coming into view plenty of things here. The terrain scatter doesn't have collision, so you don't ever have to worry about hitting it. Only uh, the parallax features will have collision if you enable them, and the breaking ground surface features have collision, so you do have to worry about running into those. So we are on the surface. Let's go ahead and plant a flag. Pretty cool little moon, gotta be careful. I'm actually using my RCS thrusters to help keep me down as opposed to flying around on the surface here. And there we have it. This is a sandbox game, so there really isn't anything to gain by going here this time. But if this were a science mode game or a career mode game, we could probably get all the science possible off of this little moon before we returned home. Now that we have planted our flag, we can go ahead and get back into orbit. And there really isn't going to be anything gained by getting into uh, Gilly orbit. We'll go ahead and quickly leave Gilly's orbit and get into orbit around E. I'm going to go ahead and do that about right here where it's the lowest or so. And just escape and get into E orbit. Now I'm going to try and get into a circular orbit. I don't really need to do this on my own, but I'm going to try using the in-game maneuver tool and it doesn't like non-circular and it doesn't like uh, very inclined orbits for calculating its maneuvers now if you use something like neck jab it does a better job with creating maneuvers with odd orbits the in-game tool doesn't seem to do it very well but now that I'm in a pretty stable circular orbit I can use the create maneuver tool and it will jump to a time here when I can make my maneuver and you can see I get a Kerman intercept from this maneuver. And this is just the in-game tool that did this so no mods or anything needed although I don't know if this is available on console yet it's definitely available on PC on the latest version and we burn and I want to get close to Kerman there we go and I'm gonna make a small mid-course correction here so that I can line up equatorially with Kerbin. I have those pieces I left in orbit that I need to dock with. So we're not just trying to re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere. There's not going to be any arrow breaking with this craft. It's pretty fragile. It was designed for Gilly. So we'll just make a few maneuvers here and gently get our craft into orbit or a close encounter with Kerbin so we can get into orbit. Ideally, I will have my periapsis here touch the orbit of my other craft. I've already set it as my target. Then I will, just like when I did for getting to Gilly, I will burn retrograde here at my periapsis, and then at my apoapsis, I will correct the inclination of my orbit. That way it'll be very cheap. So we burn here, and we will get ourselves into orbit and just barely get into orbit. Then I'll create a maneuver out there at the apoapsis and you can see just how little it's going to take to fix my inclination when I'm out here. So if you want to change your inclination, it's best to do it when your craft is moving as slowly as possible, which tends to be here at the very edge of your orbit. So as far out as you can get it, it makes inclination changes a lot easier. Now it's going to take me several burns probably to get into a low orbit around Kerbin. That's really okay. I'm just spending some time. 
and we'll each time we'll go around and drop through. Because of the low thrust to weight ratio of this craft, it just gets difficult to make one big burn. And you can see I'm setting up where I want to get some good encounters with the craft. And try again. I don't think we're going to quite do it very well this time. So I might have to go around a second time. What I like to do when I'm rendezvousing and docking is I will try to burn on the target side of the retrograde marker. What that ends up doing is it will decrease my relative velocity with the craft, but it also, because I'm burning slightly towards the target as well, you'll notice that my closest approach gets even closer. So I'm gonna come around again, and I have a pretty good approach to the target, and my relative velocities are low enough that my low thrust to weight ratio will be able to make this happen. So again, I am burning on the target side of the retrograde marker to get a very close approach, and I'm watching my closest approach markers as we come around. And I do want to make sure I do this on the daylight side of Curvet because I am not going to be able to do much in nighttime with these engines. So I just have to take where the sun is into account while I'm doing all these maneuvers. Now that we're really close, I will switch to the other craft and make sure it is also pointing towards my landing craft here and I'm going to just use the ion thruster to make small corrections as the two crafts get close together. We are going to dock. Perfect. Now I'll just use the fuel in the second stage of the rocket to deorbit the craft and then we have everything we need to land safely. Now you could probably see that those solar panels are sticking out and will not going to survive re-entry or the atmosphere of Kerbin here. That's fine. I don't need those solar panels anymore. We are going to be fine. We'll just eject that second stage booster and land. Once we pull these parachutes, that'll be good. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me for this mission to Gilly. I will see you next time.